What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Drake Riggs, here providing you all the content you could ever need here on the Drake Riggs YouTube channel. Hopefully, I would be involved since it is my channel. And today, we are gonna be embarrassing myself <laughs> by looking back at some of my older interviews and just recent interviews. Go through the timeline, timeline a little bit. I thought this would be a good experiment or excuse to utilize and test some of the uh, new applications I'm using, specifically Streamlabs, which I have already used for an interview. So how perfect is it now to uh, use it a little bit more in this facet, I suppose, and uh, get me to cringe on camera in my reactions and give you maybe some backstories to some of these. <sighs> I'm not very excited to do this. I hate kind of talking about myself, but hey, we got to overcome our fears, and uh, that's what we're going to try and do right now. So hopefully you enjoy. Hit that subscribe button, like, share, all that thing, all that stuff if you enjoy the video. And uh, follow me at DrakeRiggs underscore as well if you would like. You don't have to, but it would be nice of you. Anyway, let's start this off right from the beginning, which is my very first... Uh, on or not on camera um very first one-on-one -on -one over phone call or video any type of thing like that first interview like that that i ever did was with random arcos one of my all-time favorite fighters so it was very nice to get to do to get to have her as the first person i spoke with and i have <laughs> listened to and watched this a couple of times since then and not in full though because it is just painful it is just painful i'm not gonna make it through this whole thing just so you know we'll probably stop very early on so uh here we go i guess oh boy mma today very loud drake intro. riggs here with mma today and i'm joined by the one and only quiet storm random marcos She'll be fighting juliana lima at ufc on fox 27 in charlotte north carolina on january 27th We'll get into that later, but first, how are you, Randa? I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thank you for joining me. Okay, the um, last time we saw you in the cage, okay. you had a fantastic that, fight with Alexa. That's already too much. That's I can't do this one. <laughs> so, I can't do that one. If you want to watch it, it is in the fighter. Listen to it because it is audio only in the fighter chats slash uh, interviews playlist. But oh my god. Um, that one is just so painful for me to go back and listen to. And behind the scenes stories, I suppose, of that is, first of all, I did that interview in my truck down the road because my internet still to this day is very awful. And I wanted to make sure that I had clear quality, very stressed out about it, very nervous, all that kind of thing. And I do Wi-Fi calls on my phone because regular service is not out here for me. I don't have any bars out here, so I need the Wi-Fi for calls as well. But um, yeah, so I went and did it in my truck down the road where I had some better service. I, I believe I brought this microphone too. I don't remember, but I think I brought it in there and kind of held it up. It was just ridiculous. And oh, oh boy, that was back in the day when I started out doing interviews in MMA. I would write down the questions and kind of the questions word for word. And you can, it's just so painfully obvious to me listening back to it. Nobody has actually surprisingly ever said how scripted I sounded back then. But of course, not many people knew about me or watched my stuff. But, oh, it's just, it's very obvious if you pay attention, like, Grasso, one that you know I think should have been fight of the night, as I'm sure a lot of people also did. Even my comments. She ended up getting the split as in victory. Like this whole thing, I, I wrote down as well as fight of the night. What was your biggest takeaway from that fight? Oh, it. <laughs> That's fucking so bad. <laughs> oh my god. And Randa's great, thankfully, but um, like even my tone. And yes, I was incredibly nervous, incredibly inexperienced, but oh, it's just. I feel like you should know, but you don't know. It's it's all about reps. And uh, that one, my goodness, that is about as bad 
as it gets. Um, that is just a nightmare to listen to. So I'm moving on. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, thankfully, oh, look at this pivotal disorder four years ago. So that was a solid interview. Thanks. There you go. Um, and this guy was criticizing my agreements. So he found it awkward. There we go. <laughs> so there's that as we move along to my very first in-person interview that I ever did, which was a part of a podcast that never quite got off the ground. The Writer and the Kid, episode one. What a great logo that was. Welcome to you. And an awful disclaimer. I am one half of Hans oh. Cameron Crawford. Oh, man. I don't know why I put that there as well. That was... Just explaining what the show was. Uh, also, one of my best friends. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it with it. .com. Oh, a man. product and several fighters have supported them, such as our guests today and even the likely next middleweight title challenger. <sighs> and I had like a runny nose while I was doing that. Like just no self-awareness. Oh, my God. So let's just look at a little bit of this. I'm not going to watch every single bit, but this was actually pretty easy because I had an old friend with me who knew Ricky as well. So I wasn't too nervous about this. Tell me, uh, you're not making excuses and, uh, and you won the fight, yeah. right? I definitely wouldn't have like, brought this up if I lost and I didn't want to well, bring talk about one, it. You know, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I've had like ongoing back issues throughout like my fight career and then um, yeah, threw my back out, you know, a few weeks before, like, you know, I went from one training camp to the other. I was training for five, five minute rounds for the... I don't remember which fight this was before for Ricky or after. I know it was, it was obviously once he'd been in the UFC. He might be talking about the Marab fight right here, which was his UFC debut. Uh, when I was defending my LFA fight. Oh, okay. And then uh, I was still in the cage when they told me. But, I mean, this one doesn't even really count as, like, a regular interview. Obviously, it was a podcast, and I wasn't doing it by myself. But I still think that's fine. That one's fine to watch. The intro I did is terrible, horrendous, and probably lost a lot of engagement because of that. But uh, it's all a learning experience, right? So... The first Jesse Jess uh, conversation I had. And again, this was a time where I was making these. Drake Riggs here from BJPen.com, and I'm joined by the number nine ranked UFC flyweight contender, Jessica Rose Clark. She will be taking on Jessica. I was making these feel much more like interviews than I want to wanted to, at least now, especially now. I don't like to do intros. I just like to make it feel like we're talking. But, uh, I mean, it's a guy I, at UFC Singapore on June 23rd. Let's get right into it. I would record those before talking. All right. To so, uh, you recently posted on social media about how your body had kind of had enough going into your last fight and that you're already feeling significantly better, um, already going into this one. So, how big of a difference really is it from then to now? Uh, a huge difference. You know, um, oh. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. <laughs> um, and it's like I can't even get through the beginnings of these. It's just too much. Um, Jesse was great, though, and I remember her telling me how much she enjoyed that afterwards. And thankfully, we've grown to have a pretty solid relationship since then. Well, if it isn't Miss Jessie Jess, your hair is Jessie long. Jess. <laughs> hair is long. I know. I feel like a fucking young hipster college professor or something. <laughs> you look like a young hipster college professor. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> your hair is looking luscious, man. Is it? Is it good? <laughs> it's, I didn't say it was good. I oh, said okay. It's luscious. <laughs> All right. Well. What's the best name? I really like your name. I like Drake. I think oh, that's pretty cool. Or like a real name. 
Yeah. No, that, no, that's true. That was why. That was why I always said yes to doing interviews. And I'm like, Drake's name is sick, and he looks like a middle-aged hipster barista. Oh, um, now I'm a barista. I was a college <laughs> professor at first. Now you're wow. a barista. <laughs> what a downgrade. But all the Jessicas are doing good now. We're all yeah. on a roll, so I think. We. I you, you, we well, you. I'm a part of it, so it was my fault. <laughs> but my goodness, I don't get why people enjoyed talking to me back then. It's very very rough but thankfully they did and here we are now oh man and it only gets worse here with dakota well, zimmer you know uh actually her last nothing nothing wrong with her but this was my very first one-on-one -on -one in person that i did actually because it was my first event that i ever covered bellator 206 and she was great and this actually did very well because i was like the only oh very well at the time the only person who actually shared their interview and not that many people even talked to her of course she took on carrie melendez that night i believe it was carrie yeah yeah it was right there in the description but i didn't have anything prepared for her and i was just super duper nervous to talk to anybody and felt out of my element like i didn't belong you name it but she was very nice and uh just chatted for about three minutes and it was that it still is rough <laughs> so. I, I was i watched the weigh-ins for it i watched i watched all of it and i couldn't imagine fast forwarding being offered to fight her it's pretty cool pretty exciting um like i said the last person i have a lot of respect for her for her uh, her stand-up and I'm, I'm honored and really excited awesome and so yeah, 2016 was your last fight, correct? Yeah. In, in amateur. Is there a specific reason for the layoff? Or um, well, just... I did um, compete in Golden Gloves okay. this past year. So I, I did a boxing match um, in February. I, won. I think this was also recorded with my phone. So. It looks pretty all right. It looks okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That one's okay. I don't... Just all things considered. Still rough to watch, but after Zimmerman, we went to Gegard Mousasi, the champ. Uh, obviously, a big fight. Uh, uh, everyone says it's a super fight. It's the biggest fight in Bellator. So. And he was giving me shit before this, actually, because I was covering for BJPen.com, and it was hilarious because I, when I told him that, he was like, BJPen.com, you guys write bad shit about me. You know, he was saying all that kind of thing which uh probably wasn't inaccurate but gay guard is a very funny guy so obviously i have a lot to gain but uh as an opponent i think that i haven't seen uh, i haven't faced uh, obviously a well-rounded like tough opponent but uh i've seen it all but then uh let's see there's another fight but uh obviously uh rory's a big name so it would mean a lot lighting was terrible in this room and in your position i don't want to say it's well more like win-win for him because he can win a title you know and you can lose one so do you feel kind of like the pressure is more on you because i mean you're nice trying shirt. to keep the belt and he, he's, he can get two of them no not really because uh i need rory to make i recently spoke with one of the top featherweights in the world australia's own megan anderson one. She will be making her sophomore appearance in the UFC at UFC 232 on December 29th against Kat Zingano. A big one coming up against Kat Zingano. I mean, they're they're always big, right? <laughs> so um, when I talked to James after your last fight with Holly... Uh, uh, just the, the phone ones in the beginning, particularly. First of all, just phone call for interview... I never really liked that, but I was just very lazy, as uh, I think a lot of people tend to be when they start out, or they just don't know the ignorance, right? That's a big part of it. Just not the way to go. Just recording it, you know, like this, talking through speaker. Not great. And um, Megan, good times. Good times while well, they lasted. <laughs> All right, let's take a look here at uh, the wait, third good, round. I think I heard interview. yeah when you talked to James no Lynch intro. a couple weeks ago. Uh, you're doing Shout intermittent James. fasting now. Is that a new thing? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm actually um, partners with these uh, the meal meal people. Uh... So by this point, 
I might have stopped writing out entire questions. At least that's how that sounded to me, and I don't recall necessarily, but that sounded better watching, listening that back, listening to that back just now. Um, the local kitchen in Michigan hooked me up with awesome meals and also doing the intermittent fasting to, to speed up the weight cut a bit. It's been, it's been really good. It's, the, the meals are amazing, and uh, it's never easy next week. Uh, just don't have to <laughs> intermittent fasting on the week of yeah that's cool i've i've tried <laughs> intermittent fasting like kind of briefly not without any meal plans or anything like that but i thought it was horrible <laughs> so i mean how's it going for you <laughs> it's actually not that bad because like it's kind of like a yeah still a little bit not great <laughs> but better you can see some progression here i think not to toot my own horn or anything because i'm definitely still not perfect now and never will be but oof you can see a little bit of the difference that's for sure first time speaking with scott Coker. so here with scott coker bellator president um you know getting ready for bellator 220 this weekend um and i got some questions leading up to that um so i noticed TMZ recently style. like on the Belter website that um you guys have an atom weight division women's atom weight division listed is that just an accident or is there anything uh, anything there is yeah you know what uh, you have some, uh... i still ask scott to this day every time when we're gonna be getting the atom weights and he won't budge but <laughs> i i was really really happy with that interview uh i thought it turned out good and I still think it's fine right now, looking back on it. But funny, funny story to that one is that entire day, Bellator 220 weigh-in day right there, I had a earbud squishy, you know, like these, these kind stuck in my ear <laughs> because when I was... On my way to the morning weigh-ins, uh, I was listening to a podcast. I believe it was Seth Rogen on Armchair Expert, if I'm remembering correctly the specifics of what it was, Dax Shepard's podcast. Um, good listen there. I was walking to the hotel, listening, and when I took the headphone out, Skull Candy, back then, these are not Skull Candies I'm using right now, and they were, I think, the smallest size. Or the biggest size, I don't quite recall. But either way, I took it out and it got, it came off without the squishy part on it. So that was stuck in my ear. And when, of course, I went to try and pull it out, it only went in there longer. And I, there was nothing I could do about it to get it out. <laughs> so for that whole day, until after that Coker interview, which was right after the ceremonial interviews, uh, ceremonial weigh-ins, excuse me, I went to get some tweezers, which I still have. By the way, magic. I bought these tweezers at <laughs> at the uh, the little Walgreens. I think that was across from where I was staying. And this was after going to like a local. I don't know, not, some kind of. I don't want to say a. I don't know what it was, a pharmacy or something. And I was asking him like, "Hey, is it all right if you?" I need some help. I got an earbud squishy thing stuck in my ear could you guys help me out just <laughs> real quick please and they were like well do you have your insurance card or whatever and i for some reason didn't bring it with me on this trip so it would have been like 110 dollars just for them to pull out what was stuck in my ear i was like okay that's ridiculous i'll fucking figure it out myself went and bought these for about 13 15 bucks maybe they were pretty expensive but they're pretty good and as i said still got them but it was funny i will never forget that the cashier guy was this old man and he was like 13 dollars for tweezers it's ridiculous i was like trust me man you have no idea <laughs> could have been a lot worse but i was practically deaf in one ear that entire day and throughout that whole interview with scott coker so that is something i will always remember as a challenge to overcome and thankfully i could still hear decently out of i want to say my left ear the right one was the clogged one but <clears throat> it was pretty miserable it was pretty bad
He almost fell off the stage right there, did Sunshine. <laughs> I got the horses in the back. That was a very fun uh, event. That was fight to win 112, I want to say, in at the Oregon Convention Center. Uh, Gabby Garcia also competed that night. Wanted to chat with her, but I ended up I had to go somewhere after speaking to Chris and after he won his match. But always a very entertaining guy to speak with. And so, uh, yeah, this one I think was about to that point where I had started to get fairly comfortable doing this, and especially in person. I mean, he makes it easy. He's pretty much a, he's a pal, uh, you know, fellow Pacific Northwesterner. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what'd you think, man? How, how was the fight, fight to win? win? How was that? Dude, you, fight you to look win. tired. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, dude, I'm tired. I had a lot of stuff going on, like, you know, medical. I look older right there than I do right now because of the facial hair, and that was in 2019. August 7th, 2019. Stuff was going on with my wife, so I was like really oh, nervous. Man. Turns out it was minor, but you know, you, when you're with someone that's like your best friend, you get really invested, so mm -hmm. I was like so stressed all day, and then this thing's at 8 p.m., but then I got here, and this thing is super cool, dude. Yeah. The show is huge. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be so big. What yeah. did you, how was the match though? Like, did you get, I mean, I don't know, probably didn't research the opponent too no, much. But no, no, like, unless it's fighting, <laughs> unless it's yeah. fighting, I don't do that. Hey, yeah. Uh, I think that one was all right. I was fine with that one. Again, Chris makes it very easy. So that was fun. All right, now we've got Ricky. First time one-on-one -on -one in person, surprisingly. And I believe the last time, so shame on me. I need to get back in contact with him. But this was after I returned from China, a little bit after, what, October 5th, 2019, right there. So, yeah. Um, and that was, if you don't know why I left to China, you can see in this video, which I will put up there, little... which you can see in the little video and the card atop the screen there. Uh, but yeah, this one, I, I feel like is one of, was one of my better ones again, especially at the time. I felt very, very good about it and just comfortable, especially when speaking to somebody like Ricky, who I knew already that certainly always helps, but I was very proud of this one. All right. Drake Riggs here with the body lock standing next to me here. You know, the beginning of me saying all right before everything. You know, I'm UFC Bantamweight, Ricky Simone. Ricky, how you doing, man? We're out here for the Herberist uh, event. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, um, I've been uh, sponsored by this uh, CBD company, Northwest Therapeutics, for several years now. So we're doing like a first Friday thing here. I think it so was the jacket. It just recently opened. So yeah, we're going to have some free samples in there. Gave me all my confidence. Out, Still have some autographs for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. I'm sure that these are fun things to do. I know you've done some with the, the barbers, right? Some little sponsor yeah. events similar to that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm actually doing one with the... Yep. That one. Fine with it too. Worked out. And he did eventually get that Rob Font fight. So good for him. Oh, here we are at the very first Chael Sonnen interview. My goodness. Submission Underground 10. This was... Day after, uploaded the day after of Christmas, uh, 2019. But I that event was definitely before that, and this was a very huge deal for me because Chael Sonnen is maybe probably the reason that I am here where I am today. I uh, was an absolute super fan of the man in 2010 and beyond, and so meeting him finally after going to his shows before at Submission Underground in Portland uh, was huge. For me personally and then getting to speak with him it was a very big deal and then afterward it was just funny because you know i i told him 
that essentially it was because of him that I was there in the first place doing what I was doing and he gave me a hug. So it was very, <laughs> he's a great guy, that JLP, but I was definitely fairly nervous in this one as well, despite having some more time under the belt. All right, Drake Riggs here with RT Sports, standing with, you know, the American gangster, Chael, son, and he's no introduction, but I'm gonna give him one anyways, because he deserves it. More Paul, Chael, so. man, I'm really surprised that you made it here. You were in Hawaii last night. How did you do it? Ooh, I'm on the <laughs> grind, baby. Look, uh, got on an airplane, but I don't have a real great story about it, but the, the times did match up and we, we flew all night and the, we don't want to miss it. Funny thing about this one, though, is out of any interview that I've ever done, Far and away, far and away, that one is the one where I've had the most criticism, mainly on my looks too, on my looks and about me. Not even like how I did in the interview, but like a lot of people called me gay, seeming I seeming like I was gay or you know, these kind of things, nervous, which they were right about that, not the gay part, which I I don't know. They can think whatever they want, but that was for RT Sport. And so, I don't know, maybe that had something to do with it. Uh, many Russian viewers, I maybe they, it's not, it's not, it's kind of frowned upon over there, isn't it? To be gay, which is its own thing, unfortunately. But I got many, many comments about looking like the gay Dan Hardy, all that kind of thing. So... That was uh, pretty entertaining to read through, honestly. Didn't bother me, but I just found it very fascinating how that was what, uh, that was a big takeaway, apparently, for a lot of the viewers on this. <laughs> yeah, are you tired? You're good. Am I retired? Oh, am I tired? tired? I am very tired. I'm tired and retired. Yeah, I'm on the grind a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep well tonight. Speaking of that, though, um, you know, when you were still active this was earlier this year, uh, you know, was, there was kind of a break for Submission Underground and then came back with Submission Underground 8. Uh, you plan on doing like... All right, we'll skip ahead here because the best part or my... The part that I always use is the, uh, the end. Because he was giving me a little bit of shit in classic Chael fashion, which is great. Not really giving me shit, but having fun. Anytime I can participate... And it's very hard to do unless you want to get in the ring and throw punches and kicks. It's a hard business to participate in, so I, I do feel very fortunate. All right, well, that's all I got for you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, that's all I got for you. <laughs> right, Aren't we great. both content? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no happy holiday? No Merry Christmas? Happy, happy holidays, yes, yeah, of yeah, course. You feel like you have to say it to the mic. Happy holidays to Chael oh, Sonnen, there everybody. There it is. I mean, I kind of begged for it, but thank you. A very yes, merry to you. yours truly. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was good stuff. Great moment here. That's enough of me. Look at it. Me. <laughs> Very cringeworthy early on. And now we've gotten to this point where I think we're good enough. Not great. Maybe not even good. But doing the best we can and putting in the effort to get there. So I hope you enjoyed this, everybody. If you want to see more things like this, let me know. Give me some ideas. We can talk about it wherever, whenever. And yeah, until then, I guess I'll see you next time. Don't really have a good way to close this one out. But hey, is what it is. Don't forget to follow me at DrakeWix underscore on Twitter, Instagram if you'd like. Subscribe to the channel here and stay tuned for more stuff in the future. Until next time. Oh hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.